My name is Mike Honda. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, um, uh, Mike apparently uh, could not make it today, uh, but you know he's a great friend. He actually had me perform at the Democratic National Convention at the Asian event out there. And when I said, well, where am I going to stay because all the hotels are booked, he goes, hey, Dan, you can stay in my room. I said, well, I, I'm not trying to be an intern or a page. Uh, <laughs> Anyway, uh, it's an honor to be here and uh, to uh, support Roe. I did an event with Roe last year, and um, he was still in the administration, I think, and I asked him, Does Ro, is Roe short for anything? And he said, it's short for Roe it. I said, well, Roe it's not that long. Right? <laughs> I mean, next thing you know, he's just going to call himself Ro. <laughs> But anyway, it's, it's wonderful to see what's going on in the South Asian community. Uh, you know, we don't have any congressmen yet. Roe is going to be number one. Am I right? Yeah. Yes. Roe is going to be the first one. Now, we do. The great news is we have two South Asian governors. That's amazing. The bad news is they are Bobby Jindal and Nikki Haley. Um, <laughs> at least we have them. It's, uh, but, uh, Anyway, I just got back from uh, touring. I just did Dar es Salaam and uh, Doha and Dubai. Dubai, who's been to Dubai? You're all rich. You've all been to Dubai, right? <laughs> Dubai, is Dubai is like India on steroids, am I right? <laughs> what India could be without corruption, right? I mean, and uh, I also did a tour. I uh, just set it down there. Thank you, yes. <laughs> I did a tour of India a couple months ago, Bangalore and Pune. And I was wondering why there's no casinos in India and I realize it's because you gamble with your life whenever you drive, right? Or when you eat or drink, right? And who, anybody get sick in India? <laughs> Intestinal uproar? Yes, I had it. I caught it again every time. It makes me wonder when people come from India to America, do they get constipated? <laughs> so I was, uh, let's see, I was in Hong Kong. I was in China. I was in Beijing. And I, I asked someone just to mess with them. I said, hey, where's Chinatown? <laughs> no Chinatown here. This is all a Chinatown. <laughs> you want a Chinatown, you go back to your country. <laughs> but uh, now, just so you know, those of you who don't know, my dad is from Kerala. Your dad is from Kerala. And my mom is from Japan. All right. Yes, uh, Indian, I'm Indian and Japanese, yes. I get my sushi from 7-Eleven. <laughs> and the uh, Ku Klux Klan left a burning question mark on our front lawn. Yes. Right. Now, folks, uh, this might shock you, but before I was a comedian, I was actually a computer guy. I worked uh, down the road at uh, Intel in... Uh, sh hey, folks, we've got comedy over here. Come on down. Yes, it's, it's free. <laughs> I did the, uh, folks, I did the Kennedy Center in March, the Maximum India Festival with Amjad Ali Khan and El Subramanian and, and other small names. <laughs> it was amazing. I was in this hall, 600 feet long, 200 feet high, and I didn't think anybody was going to show up. So I called all my Indian friends, please come to my show at the Kennedy Center tonight. And they're like, I don't know, it is a Thursday. I'm very busy, I have children. I said, well, it's free. It's like, oh, what time is the show? <laughs> and 2,000 people showed up. It was fantastic. Yes, yes. So, um, folks, now this is, this is a true story. I'm, uh, I was brought up in D.C. I was driving to the airport with my parents, and we see these cows grazing off in a field. So my dad says, now, there is a word that can have a lot of different meanings. Graze. For example... For example, a cow can graze, and then I say, or you can be grazed by a bullet, especially if you're hanging out with Vice President Cheney. <laughs> and then my mom says, or it's a kind of a donut. <laughs> <laughs> Who didn't get that? <laughs> now, my mom has problems with the L's and R's, like many Japanese. Yeah, so instead of saying Barack Obama, she actually says Barack Obama. I said, no, 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 Mom, it's, it's Barack Obama. You have to say Barack Obama. And she says, that would be lacist. 
But um, I will tell you, my mother is very, my mother is very, very excited about the upcoming election. She's very excited about the upcoming election, which is not how she pronounces that word. <laughs> if you don't ask, uh, if you don't understand that, ask your children. Uh. And speaking of children, I see we have some very well-behaved young ones here. It's fantastic. I, I do a lot of uh, Indian events where there are children running around and screaming, and I, I, I always like to say, you know, children are the future, but they're causing problems in the present. <laughs> <laughs> I always wonder, you know, I do a lot of Malayali events and I wonder why, you know, why they bring their kids to these adult things and they say, oh, we're very family orientated. <laughs> and I think the truth is they don't want to pay for a babysitter. Uh. <laughs> but no, I, I had a kid come up to me, a kid comes up to me, you know, after a show and I could tell he wants my autograph and he comes out, he goes, are you famous? <laughs> I was going to lie to him, but I said, no, not really. And he goes, okay, thank you, and he walks away. <laughs> now, Ro mentioned, uh, you know, education and the importance of education. My, my father is always bragging to me about how difficult it was to get to school in India. Have you heard these stories? In India, I had to walk seven miles to school. Seven. <laughs> and both ways are uphill. <laughs> in the snow in Kerala, right yeah. I mean he made himself sound like he was Indiana Jones just to get to school, right to get to school in India I had to climb Mount Everest which is not in India and I had to swim the Ganges River lengthwise and then I had to cut through seven miles of jungle every day just to get to school with nothing but a machete and then the next time he told the story, it was with nothing but a pocket knife. Then it was a letter opener. And finally it was a spoon. And every time he told the story, the slope kept getting higher and steeper until it was, I had to climb up a cliff straight up, seven miles every day just to get to school. You know, and by this time I'm thinking, what about homeschooling? And he's like, just like Indiana Jones, there's a big round boulder chasing me the whole way to school. I'm like, hold on, how can a boulder chase you up a cliff? I was pulling it. It was tied to my little toe. <laughs> and then no matter what you do, in, if, you're, if you're the child of Asian immigrants, no matter what you do in school, it's never good enough, right? I had a 4.0 in high school. My father says, you should do better than 4.0. <laughs> I, just yesterday, I told him I'm one of the 99%. He says, you should be 100%. You know, and, and then I was taking AP Physics and AP Calculus in high school. Now, everyone knows AP stands for Asian people. <laughs> I told my father, I'm, hey, I'm taking Calculus in high school, like Ro. He goes, that is nothing. In India, we do calculus in kindergarten. <laughs> and uh, now the Czech people always ask me, your dad is from India, your mom is from Japan, where do they possibly meet? Indiana, duh. <laughs> they met in Bloomington, Indiana. I was going to, uh, they were going to school, and I was born, this is true, seven months after they were married. I'll let that sink in. <laughs> and, uh, all these years, my parents have been trying to tell me I was premature. <laughs> when in fact, I think it was my father that was premature. <laughs> and I, I get calls from uncles, I get calls from uncles all over the U.S., all over the world now that want to hire me for their events. <laughs> I, got, I got a call the, day, the other day, this uncle like, hey Dan, we want to hire you for show, but, but we are very religious people, very religious, and we don't want any profanities or vulgarities or pelvic movements. <laughs> Uncle, I'm not Elvis Presley. How much you charge? We, we are very religious. How much you charge for your show? Well, Uncle, my normal fee is about $5,000 plus air and hotel. $5,000? Are you out of your mind? God damn you! <laughs> We're thinking more like 500 <laughs> rupees. <laughs> so uh, I think I'm out of time here, but I have uh, 
Now, I, folks, uh, I brought along some uh, CDs and DVDs for sale. Uh, now, these are normally $15 a piece on my website, but today, since you're such a great audience in this beautiful California weather, um, <laughs> it's a special, it's, a, it's, it's 20. <laughs> no, no, it's 20 for both the CD and the DVD, and I accept credit cards, and uh, I'd like to donate. Uh, now, I'll keep $2 for myself to cover the costs, and I would donate the other... $18 to the Rogue Campaign. Would you like that? Yeah! All right, so we can raise yeah. a couple grand here if everybody buys one. And uh, <laughs> Now, if you don't want to buy anything, that's fine. Uh, come up and say hi if you enjoyed uh, my little thing here. And, and uh, my business cards are free. <laughs> oh, free. I'll take two. <laughs> I'm available for corporate functions and uh, weddings and funerals. No, I, I did a show two years ago in Houston. This auntie comes out to me. She goes, I want to hire you for my husband's funeral. <laughs> and he was standing right there. <laughs> All right, my name is Daniel Nyman. Thank you very much. Thank you all for coming. Before we wrap up, I just want to mention that Ashwini Kumar of the Madhuban restaurant has uh, contributed all the food for this day. And so thank you, Ashwini. A big thank you. Thanks everybody for coming. Thanks for a great candidate and look forward to seeing you next time. <laughs>